So, so yeah, good. Uh, let's, let's see. I'll let you know when it's recording. Yeah. Okay, we are recording. So, okay. uh, hi, Olivia. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so, first off, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Okay. Um, um, I live in San Diego. Um, I am part of the D39 Tech team. Um, I am 11 years old, and um, tech is my passion. Um, anything related to Apple, I really like to use. I use a, a MacBook. I love the apps like QuickTime, FaceTime, all like all those apps Apple's created. Those are things I definitely love to use. Um, and I'm really, I'm really. Once I heard about Apple accessibility and what you've created, it really, it really was something I really wanted to deep, dig deeper in. That's excellent. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a passionate Apple user too. I've been for uh, quite a while and uh, accessibility is the reason why I use Apple products because uh, they really stand out. Um, you know, a lot of companies now do accessibility. It's not as unique as it used to be, but I still feel like Apple is the leader in this field. Um, it started a trend. Uh, now the rest of the industry has followed, but Apple is really always at the forefront. Um, and they do a really nice job of including accessibility on all of their devices. So it's uh, very uh, unique in that sense, in the, in, in the way that uh, it's so well integrated throughout the whole ecosystem, uh, but also how easy it is to use accessibility on Apple devices. So uh, well, we share a common passion for sure. Okay, so I have some questions for you. Um, sure. So first, um, I would want to ask you, how does Apple accessibility affect your life and daily routine? Oh, in so many different ways. Um, I don't know where to start, <laughs> but let me give you a few examples. Um, first of all, I wouldn't be able to use my Mac. So we're connected to a Mac right now. And uh, right away when somebody kind of picks up my Mac, um, they know right away that it's somebody with a low vision or with a visual impairment that's using it. Um, the reason for that is I have a large pointer. So um, I can't find a pointer on the screen because um, I have a condition where I can't see motion very well. And so even just being able to find the pointer on the screen, um, it's really helpful to be able to go into the accessibility settings and make that pointer as large as I can. Um, I also have, um, you know, high, I use a lot of high contrast mode. That's basically where it reverses the colors. So you have a dark background with light text. And then um, I also use the text-to-speech quite a bit, um, especially when my eyes get tired because using a computer is a little bit difficult for me. I have some vision remaining, but it's, you know, I have no peripheral vision, so I can't see anything on either side or up and down. So it's really like looking through a straw, uh, what I can see. And so um, that can tire my eyes quite a bit, especially towards the end of the day. And so being able to use text-to-speech allows me to rest my vision uh, a little bit. Okay, so, um, it's, so I was wondering if you could tell um, us about yourself and the work you have been doing with Apple Accessibility. Right, so um, I currently work as an inclusive learning, uh, I call it evangelist because my mission is really to go out there and make people more aware of these features and show them that um, you know, they're not that difficult to use. Um, and, and part of that work is convincing um, teachers that these features are not just for people with disabilities. They're really there for anybody who needs just some additional support. Um, and so um, that's a concept known as universal design, right? We, we, the reason why these features are built in is because, um, you know, maybe some people with disabilities can use them, but it turns out that a lot of times other people can use them. Like the text-to-speech is a great example. Uh, you may be on a train commuting and maybe you don't have um, time or, or you just can't be looking at the screen at a given time. Well, you can turn on the text-to-speech and just listen to that content. So there's many different ways in which these accessibility features are there for everybody. Uh, and they work for everybody. Uh, so I basically um, work 
primarily with teachers or people who are going to be teachers and teaching them how to use these features so that when they go into the classroom, they have them as part of their toolkit that they can use to provide access to uh, a range of different learners. Um, and then I, I do that work as well, not just in person, but I create videos, I create eBooks, um, I create blog posts, uh, any way or any medium that I can use um, to get that message out, I will rely on. Whether that's a, you know, a blog post on uh, my website uh, or that's an eBook. Uh, and I've created a number of those. So it, it's part of my professional life, but it's also something that I live on a daily basis. So it's, it's hard to separate the two sometimes when I'm talking professionally and when it's something that's a little bit more personal. That's actually, I really um, am interested about that. Um, I also have a little question about that. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to teachers, what do they um, normally, well, when you go to teachers, what would you normally show to them? Like, would you show them like anything like particular? Like, would you show them how to use like speech in that device or would you show them like, yeah. Yeah, let's let's um, actually make this a little bit more concrete. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, you're going to be able to see my screen in just a second. Uh, first, you're going to see yourself because <laughs> it's, it's going to mirror the screen. So let me know when you're able to see the, uh, should be able to see my iPad right now. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of things here that um, I find anybody can take advantage of, but especially uh, teachers because uh, one of the issues sometimes is being able to uh, access the content in a different modality. Uh, so this is a feature called um, Speak Selection. And what it lets you do is you can go into any website, right? You can select some text. So what I'll do here is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is on my website, by the way. So I'm going to zoom in. And what I'm going to do is just tap and hold one of these words. And when I let go, I get these handles. And I can draw a selection essentially over any of this content here. Um, so I'm just going to keep this very brief. I'm just going to select a sentence, a single sentence. And then uh, when I let go, it will say speak because I've enabled this uh, text to speech feature in the settings. And so I'll select speak and then you'll hear it uh, read this sentence out loud. Now, that is, you heard it speak really fast. Um, that's actually a bug whenever I share the screen. <laughs> so that's why you're not hearing it spoken the way it normally would, would you know, speak it so you could understand it. But yeah. I, again, um, if I weren't sharing the screen, this would work perfectly um, where I could select some text and then tap speak. Uh, let me try this. Um, the other way we can use this feature is I could just swipe from the top of the screen and it could speak everything on the screen. So that's called speak screen. And again, you enable that in the settings. So I'm going to swipe down with two fingers and let's see if that works. Again, there's a bug with the mirroring. So let's see how that works. Now that's coming through. Okay. I'm going to turn off, take off my headphones because I think it's going through the computer and then you should be able to hear it. So give me a second while I do that. iTunes, U course, eBooks, infographics, video tutorials, app resource lists. Welcome, welcome to my website. Were you able to hear that? Yeah. All right, so that's big screen. And the difference here is I perform that gesture. So basically I just hold two fingers uh, over the uh, top edge of the screen. I pull down, like if I'm pulling down a shade, and it starts to read everything on the screen. And what's nice about that is you get these extra controls here. So you can pause it, you can move the highlighting. I don't know if you can see the word I is highlighted right now. So that's helpful uh, for people that have dyslexia or other reading difficulties. It allows them to track the words as they're being read out loud so you can see exactly what it's reading uh, with a text-to-speech. I can pause this, I can move the highlighting forward or backwards. I could even adjust the uh, speaking rate. So it's really um, customizable how you can use this text-to-speech feature. So generally when I work with teachers, um, this is where I start because uh, this could be helpful to somebody with low vision, it could be helpful to somebody with dyslexia, it could be helpful to anybody that has difficulty with uh, decoding, what we call decoding of the text. 
And so they could use um, audio as a support for reading. Um, and of course, um, there are other supports. Um, I'm gonna show you one here. I'm gonna bring up a note. <laughs> You probably already know, right, that you can use the uh, dictation where you can tap the microphone icon and then uh, on the on-screen keyboard. And then it just basically, you speak into it and it types in that uh, text for you. It takes the, the audio that you've spoken and turns it into text. Uh, but another great feature here is the fact that you can also switch keyboards. So here's my favorite keyboard that I like to use all the time. It's called Keeble. K-E-E-B-L-E. -E -E. And what it does is it gives you high contrast. It also highlights the vowels. So um, especially for uh, younger learners, um, you know, points that out to them where the A, E, I, O, U, where those are found, and then the special keys. So for instance, the, the lead key or the shift key, I can now find it, find it much easier on this keyboard. Also, there's a special font there, which is called the uh, Dyslexi font. And that makes those letters a little bit more, um, a little easier to distinguish for somebody that has uh, dyslexia because it adds a little bit of weight to the bottom of the letters. So for instance, if you look at the letter D, you notice at the bottom, it has a little bit of added weight to it. So um, again, this is just a, a support where you can turn it on when you need it, but when you don't need it or somebody else is using the iPad and they don't need this, you can just tap the globe and it takes you back uh, to the uh, standard keyboard. Um, and then you'll see here on the standard keyboard, we have something called quick type, where as you start to type, it tries to predict the word that you want to enter it into your text. And that's a great example of universal design because um, it turns out people with disabilities have been using this kind of word prediction for many years, maybe a couple of decades. But then when we went to mobile devices, all of a sudden people needed something that made typing faster and more efficient. And so we were able to take advantage, everybody can take advantage of that word prediction now um, because it's built in. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing uh, to kind of wrap up some of these features, there's something called voiceover and it's really neat. It's a screen reader and it allows somebody who's blind can't see the screen at all to be able to hear the content, uh, all the apps, all the controls define or describe for them. So I'm gonna turn that on. And the way I do that is using a shortcut where I triple click the home button. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun here. I'm gonna show you how I take a picture using uh, nothing but voiceover. <laughs> Ignore the speech. <laughs> it's, it's just a bug with the, uh, with the um, mirroring here. So what I can do now is I can move my finger around on the screen and you're seeing a square around the camera, right? Yeah. It's called the voiceover cursor. So as I move my finger around, it's gonna read different things out loud. So basically, uh, as I move my finger around, I'm moving that cursor and I can do that just by hovering over different apps or I can swipe left, I can swipe right either way and then moves the cursor. When it gets to the option that I want, I can just then double tap anywhere on the screen. Uh, so basically the entire screen becomes a big button that you can double tap on. And the reason why it's a double tap is if you were blind, right, you might select something by mistake. So you might be on a website and then tap the selection for buy an iPad. <laughs> and that would buy that iPad for you automatically. So with voiceover, it first makes you select something by moving that cursor and then you have to double tap. So that's there to prevent you from doing something accidentally. Um, so now that I have the camera selected, I would double tap, it would launch the camera. And what's neat is the camera can actually recognize my face. It can recognize multiple faces. And then it's, it basically describes what it's seeing and I can take a picture. So let's see if this works. So it's gonna say zero faces. Let me bring it up so that you can see. Um, change the cameras here. Yeah. 
you can kind of understand it a little bit. It says zero faces if I move away, but if I move in front of the camera, it will say one face, large face. Oh. Sorry, it, it sounds like a chipmunk right now. <laughs> Let me turn it off. So I just turned off voiceover and the way that I did that is I triple click home and then I chose voiceover and it turned it off for me. So that's really, really powerful. It, it's a game changer for people who are blind because an iOS device, right? It's just a flat, you know, piece of glass. It has no buttons on it. So if you're blind, how are you going to feel, you know, all the different options? Well, Apple has figured out that audio is a way that you can learn this interface uh, and it's very powerful. So let's see, what other questions do you have for me? Um, so why did you choose this profession and how did it affect, um, people's life? Uh, for me, I mean, it was really out of need, out of a personal need. Um, I was in graduate school. I was an adult already when I found out that I was going to lose my vision. And the way that happened is I got into a series of car accidents. Uh, I had my genetic, my condition is genetic. So I I've had it my whole life, but I, I didn't know that I had it. Um, and so I basically lived my life out like anybody else would uh, until I um, moved from New York City. Because if you live in New York City, you can get away with not driving, right? Because there's buses and trains everywhere. But I moved to an area where I had to drive everywhere. And so I had to get a driver's license all of a sudden as an adult. And um, as I got into those car accidents, um, you know, we figured out that I had this uh, visual uh, impairment. And um, I had to change my job. And so I had to change my career. I had to go back to school. And as I was going through school, I was really struggling with how to, you know, do some basic things. And so um, one day I walked into a computer lab and by chance they had got new Macs. And those were the first Macs that had the uh, voiceover screen reader. And so I heard Alex, which is the uh, built-in voice speak for the first time and it kind of blew me away because it's such a high quality voice it's so much better than other screen readers and so that to me um uh, it's like a magical moment where my life changed in an instant right um i was kind of a little bit depressed before that because i didn't know you know what direction my life was going to take and then all of a sudden um listening to alex and listening to all the great work that had been done in accessibility on these devices, it really kind of gave me hope that, you know, things were going to be okay. And so that was the most important thing that the technology did for me is sort of that message of hope. And, uh, and so that's why I do what I do is I, I love to work with um, both kids and adults uh, who are going through that process of kind of, you know, learning what they can and can't do mostly what they can do because a lot of times we assume there's more of the you know can't do but really with some supports there's a lot you can do and so it's just basically um, I love having that magical moment where in an instant I can change somebody's life just by giving them their iPhone and turning on a few of these features and having them realize that there's so much more that they could be doing with it. That's really amazing how you you took something that you you thought you didn't, you couldn't do, and now you're helping other people achieve that. It's re it's really amazing how you're doing that. Um, so I was thinking, um, so I was gonna ask you another question, um, and it was, when did Apple start thinking about Apple accessibility, and how did it impact the first user? Um, so it, it's been a while. Um, like I said, it originally was mostly on the Mac. Um, I think it was around 2005 when the first um, set of Macs that came with uh, voiceover and a lot of these features built in. Um, and then in 2009, though, we had a big change happen, which is the, uh, the first iPhone with voiceover came out. And that was the iPhone 3GS. <laughs> you have to go back in history to find an iPhone 3GS. Um, and that was the first iPhone that had accessibility uh, built in. And then, um, you know, that, that really changed things because while it was on the Mac, you know, it was very limited. You know, as you know, there's not as many Mac users as there are Windows and other operating system users. But um, we all want our technology to be mobile. 
right? And so that's what really gave rise to the, the mobile phone as such a, a huge change in the industry. Uh, and then the tablet right after that, right, with the iPad. Uh, so I think um, when voiceover came to the iPhone 3GS, that was the really the, the, the big shift in the industry. Um, and then it just grew from there. And so uh, every iPhone since, uh, every iPad since, <clears throat> you know, has had these accessibility features built in as a uh, standard option. Um, so um, this is a kind of an add-on question. Um, so when you help people with, um, like, do, um, when you help people, like, figure out how they can um, figure out their device with, with their disability, um, how does um, that impact you? Like, when you see their faces, when they're so happy that they can use a device, how does that impact you as like um, a person? Well, I mean, that, that's really the second part of your question, right? So the first part is kind of letting them discover that um, a lot of this is built in, like they don't have to go out and buy additional apps. Um, it's just a matter of going into the accessibility options and kind of exploring a little bit and uh, trying out a number of these features. Um, so for me, I always make it about them, right? Uh, obviously it does, you know, kind of, it's a very fulfilling thing because it keeps me going. Um, whenever you do good, you know, you put good out into the world, it, it does nothing but come back to you. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, it, it's a really positive thing for me. I love to do it, but what's more important for me is it's what it does for the other people or the other person's life and the way that it empowers them to now um, go out and face the world with just you know a lot more confidence and um, a lot of um, sort of empowerment that they can do whatever they want to do so to give you an example right now um, for the last couple of years i've been working with a young man at auburn university and uh, he is uh, blind he has motor difficulties he can't speak <laughs> So he has a number of challenges because he uh, technically died in the sense that uh, he had an allergic reaction and was in a coma for a while. He actually didn't have a heartbeat for about 45 minutes. And so um, when he came back, um, you know, he had a number of uh, challenges that we had to address. And so uh, one of them was how was he going to be able to continue his education in college? And um, uh, Logan, uh, who's the, the kid's name, he is now using voiceover. He's using switch control, which is the built-in switch access technology on iOS. And then um, he's using an app, uh, which I'm actually writing a blog post about today, right before I spoke to you. Uh, the name of the app is Workflow. And it allows you to basically create a, to automate some things that you do on your device. So for instance, uh, you can create a workflow where with a tap of a button, it opens up a website, it you know, changes it to uh, text, and then it reads that out loud. And so we're using workflow um, to kind of make things easier for uh, Logan because voiceover and switch control, um, they're fairly easy to, to learn, but they're still sort of a challenge uh, to using them efficiently. So. Combining all those things, lately, the, the last thing that we've added to his workflow is the Amazon Echo. So we've made it so that he can, uh, with a tap of a button on his uh, home screen, uh, it basically speaks some text out loud. So remember, he has difficulty with speaking. The Echo recognizes what the app has said, or his device has said, and then it can perform all kinds of things, you know, from giving him his news to, uh, opening articles that his professors had dropped uh, into an account, um, all kinds of things that, all kinds of possibilities that this has opened up to him. So that's what excites me. It's really looking at some creative uses of these technologies. Um, so how does Apple accessibility um, impact Apple and its devices? Uh, Apple itself, you know, what's great is, and that a lot of people don't know, like a lot of the people that develop the accessibility features on Apple devices themselves have disabilities. <laughs> there actually, there's quite a few uh, members of the Apple accessibility team that are blind or who have low vision. 
And I think that uh, really shows in the design of some of these features um, because they're designing, you know, from a very unique perspective, not just as a, a professional, but as somebody who relies on these accessibility features. Uh, for instance, you can go online and go to the Apple developer website and every year they have a developer conference. Um, it's coming up this year in June called the Worldwide Developers Conference. And um, in the last couple of years, they've had members of Apple's accessibility team actually demo some of the apps that have won awards there. So for instance, the workflow app that I just uh, told you about, uh, that was actually demoed by Apple engineers uh, in 2005. Um, so they actually went up there and demoed the app and then they got, a, you know, the, the developers of that app got a big award for it. Um, so I think that that's another part of how, how, why it's so well integrated. It's that they really bring in people with disabilities to provide their input. And um, another role that I have is I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator. And so part of that role is providing, uh, you know, an advisory, uh, I mean, an advisory role of whenever I run across bugs, like the one we just discovered with the mirroring, <laughs> um, I can submit bugs for the reports for those and I can provide input to kind of um, influence the development of these tools. Um, and then um, part of an, being an ADE or Apple Distinguished Educator is kind of spreading the word about these features so that more people use them and benefit from them. Um, so, what are some of the most helpful um, features in Apple Accessibility? Well, um, I, I already showed you the uh, speak selection, speak screen. It's the built-in text-to-speech. Um, the dictation is very helpful. Um, Siri, there's so much you can do with Siri where you can just hold down a button, right? Um, the one button that you can see on an iOS device is that home button, right? That little circular button. And so you can hold down that button and you can send quick text messages, you know, uh, uh, ask Siri to pull up information from the web, get you directions. So a lot of my blind friends take advantage of Siri quite a bit. Um, there's the voiceover screen reader. So if you're completely blind, you can get the information uh, in a different modality. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit there. So what I would recommend to people is just go in and explore it a little bit. Um, for most of these features, you can try them out without really locking yourself out of your device. Um, really, it's just a couple like voiceover and switch control that you do need to know what you're doing uh, because they change how you interact with your device. But other than that, everything else, text to speech and so on, you can try it out with no harm. <laughs> okay, so is there anything you'd like to share or, um, or to add to wrap up this um, interview or conversation? Uh, a couple of things. Um, people who want to learn more about my work, they can obviously visit my website, which is uh, luisperezonline.com. Um, and when you go there, go to the resources tab, and you'll see that I've uh, created a number of ebooks. Um, I it gives you all of the different articles that I've written. Um, I also have some app lists because I'm always compiling these lists for educators. Um, and most importantly for me. Uh, I try to practice accessibility in everything I do uh, from not only like it's not enough to know how to use the built in accessibility features. It's also important for educators to create accessible content. And so I try to mirror that or model that with my ebooks and my blog posts, you know, making sure that every image has a description so that when somebody who's blind gets to that image, they can hear what it's actually uh, you know, what the information is that it presents. So I try to model that in creating accessible learning materials, but also in the design of the curriculum itself. You know, there's a, a framework or universal design for learning where we try to design uh, the curriculum with a lot of options so that if you're blind or if you have dyslexia, you can still find an option that works for you. Uh, so for instance, instead of asking every student to write an essay, you know, uh, for an assessment, well, if, what if you struggle with writing? Then uh, are we really assessing whether you understand the content or if, whether you can write? So in that case, we can provide some options for the writing. We can have you do an interview like we're doing right now. We can have the person record their answers. Uh, there's many different ways that you can show your understanding. 
that don't have to do with writing. And so that's, that's my other passion is to make the curriculum more flexible so that, you know, it works for more learners. Um, thank you so much. Um, um, I really had a great time learning about Apple accessibility and learning about how you've aff affected other people's life. Oh, no problem. My, my pleasure. And I'm not crying. It's just that when I look at a, uh, I'm looking at you on the screen. And so it kind of tires my eyes out. <laughs> so, so I'm getting, I'm tearing up, but it's not because I'm sad or anything. It's just that it tires my eyes out focusing on the spot for a while, but uh, it, it's tears of joy. <laughs> but uh, no, it's been really exciting. I hope you got a lot out of this interview. If there's anything that you need me to clarify, just go ahead and, and send me an email or a text message and I'll be happy to do that. Oh, so um, about this, I'm going to be writing a blog about what I've learned about Apple accessibility and what I've learned about you. Um, and I'm going to put it on my website. Um, yeah, so I'll be in touch and I'll probably um, send you my link for my website so that, that you can look up. That would be great. I'll be happy to share it on social media. That's a great way that we build awareness and get this work to be more known. So you're doing a great thing there by focusing on this topic and uh, you know, making sure that your classmates and the rest of your school knows about this. Um, I think you're, you're part of the mission, right? You're part of the, what we try to do. So I was happy to talk to you today. Thank you. Yeah. All right. well, Thanks, thank you so much for doing this. No problem, my pleasure, anytime. As I was telling her, I'm not crying. It's just my eyes get tired and they start watering up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Take care, okay? Thank I'll start you. the recording real soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Sure, bye-bye.